let's talk about it. Hello and welcome to Thick Radio, the podcast where we talk about gaining and everything in its orbit. I'm James. And I'm Tim. So let's get into this. Today we're joined by a special guest. You know them, you love them. It's Alex. Yay, Alex. Thank you so much for being here, baby. How are you? I am good. Lovely to be here. Oh my God. I'm on another talk show. I'm blushing. Alex, you're, of course, referring to your seminal introduction to the podcasting world with your appearance on Big Boy Brunch. Oh, yeah. Like, go check out Lolo Vons on Instagram and Big Boy Brunch. Shout out to him for Mm -hmm. helping me make my debut. But, like, yeah, it's fun to get on these things and talk. So let's get into it. Absolutely. Well, look, Tim, what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about confidence, compliments, and consciousness. So, Alex, you and I, we were kind of bantering about this because obviously we were very interested in having you on the podcast. We were talking about the type of things you'd want to speak on and the type of things that you're quite knowledgeable about. And we kind of felt like these three topics really kind of encapsulate the brand that you personally put out there into the gaming universe and a lot of what you represent. So, listen, to kick things off, what has your journey been like in terms of being able to love yourself for how you look? Oh, very okay. It's a very good question. If I had to like pick a time, like a timeline of like how this all came to be, like basically through high school, like no one's really confident in high school. And looking back on it, I was not, I was not in a place where like I understood myself nor did I really like myself, even love myself. But like, as time got went on, like even as a young teenager, I was like, you know what? There are all of these people who keep saying like, when they look back, they wish they were kinder to themselves. They wish they were like happy where they were because like they're not happy as they get older, like how they look, how they behaved and all that. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to just cut out the middleman and I'm going to just be happy now. So I just decided, yo, I'm going to do everything in my power to like myself, love myself, and just enjoy life as much as possible. So, well, after high school and I got into college, I just started to figure out what it is I actually liked and then tried everything in my power to have the confidence and the courage to just do what I liked, despite what other people said or thought. I love that. I think it's, um, it's highly relatable content. I think so many of us go through high school. We don't know what the fuck we're doing. It's such a weird time. How, how do you learn to love the person that you are when you don't know who you are? Puberty makes a mess of so many things. And I think that's a really great approach to really, take a step forward in just choosing to do things that interest you because I think a lot of us shy away you can definitely identify with you know feeling those feelings in high school and I think it's so funny whenever someone says oh high school is, is the best years of your life for who who really has the best time of their life and like if if you honestly peak in high school if that's like the only like great memories you have of your life what the fuck have you been doing with your life like I fucking hated high school and I would no power on earth would make me want to go back. Like I have discovered so much more about who I was because I was not in an institution where I was surrounded by a bunch of other assholes trying to figure out who they are, you know? And I, I had those feelings of looking in the mirror as a teenager and not liking what I see. But I I've talked before about how I didn't realize exactly what it was until I became an adult and decided to throw myself into the gaming experience because it's like, that's what was missing the whole time. I had zero confidence when I was the body type that everyone expected me to be and what the gay community wanted me to look like. But then once I seize the reins of my own destiny and my own body image, confidence goes soaring sky high. Yeah. And it's funny you mentioned that, like I, 
there was this one teacher I had who basically said like you're gonna look back at high school and miss it and like I have not been in high school for like almost a decade now and I can tell you with full confidence I would choose my worst day in like college after I graduated over my best day in high school like there's nothing I look back on high school and like you know what I want to go back to that like let's let's go back to like all the times I just thought oh if someone just said hi to me like that means they were my best friend like no like not no it is weird reflecting on high school and thinking like the things I I miss most about high school isn't high school it's like when I'm at home, not doing my homework, watching anime, <laughs> being trash. Like I miss, I miss a world in which I didn't have to go to work and didn't have to work for a living and didn't have those expectations on me. But then, you know, high school is all about, hey, so you're 14 now, you're too young to have sex and you're far too young to get a tattoo or drive. But how about you choose the classes that you want to do that's going to determine the courses that you do in university, that's going to determine the job that you work for the rest of your life until you die? Like, that's fine, apparently. Not here for that fuckery. Very glad that my mother watched me have my own mental breakdown and suicide attempt in high school because she stopped trying to push my three younger siblings to do university. Wouldn't you know it, they all chose trades and none of them have debt. (laughs) They're all doing fine. (laughs) Thanks, mum. But, you know, (laughs) that's love for you. (laughs) Nothing like a mother's love. Um, (laughs) so as you've grown he's okay as you grow do you acknowledge that you look bigger in the sense it like is there a sense as well of like you can see that you look bigger and do you also acknowledge that you feel bigger or do you just feel like the same size you were before you started okay so this is kind of the weird thing for me. Unless I'm looking like at a picture, like two pictures side by side, I cannot tell the difference. So like if I saw a picture that I took like a few hours ago, I could not tell you if I look different than a picture I took like two, like 12 years ago. Well, Okay, maybe an exaggeration, but you get the point. Like, it's very hard for me to tell, like, that I look different unless they're, like, side by side. As opposed, in terms of, like, do I feel bigger? When I look in the mirror, it's not so much that I feel bigger. Like, I still feel like the same person, right? And, like, unless it was, like, a really drastic change, I don't really see it when I do feel bigger is whenever I'm trying to do something like physical and like it takes more energy or it takes longer or I get out of breath like stairs I can definitely say like I could go upstairs a lot faster back in college than I do now and that's how I know like oh okay there's a something's different like something's up now that that doesn't really make me feel like bad per se because to me my size is kind of irrelevant to my happiness if that makes any sense like I'm of the mental inclination that if I lose weight okay if I gain weight okay if I stay the same okay like I am a gainer but like entitled more than like behavior or sexuality I just try to like do everything I can to be happy where I am in that moment as opposed to like always wanting the thing that I don't have so I have to introduce you to someone uh his name is 21 year old James I forget how like tiny you were who is she it me no like, oh my God, you, you know, it's always interesting to see like the chins, like you only had one chin. And now I've got like two or three hiding up under here. It's also the neck, look at that neck. 
Yeah, you had a neck a lot like mine. I had a very long, graceful, swan-like neck with a very defined jawline, and now I just have a tree stump with like <laughs> oh, with yeah. just this extra padding around. Like, and that is the one thing that I'm still very insecure about. Like, I'm okay with everything, but the fact that my jawline has become so soft, my cheeks have become so plump, round, and like basically my whole head takes on the shape of a big circle. That like I still have insecurities about that. It's cute. I, I am mean, actually... sorry, Alex. We are all we are all circle heads here. Like you're in great company. One hundred percent. I very much have like a pizza dough face. So if you skull fucked me, it would be like skull fucking like a raw pizza. Like that's the experience that you want to have. That's a lovely mental image. Thank you. Isn't it just? Mm, absolutely. Like put that in a nursery rhyme. <laughs> i'm curious like tim mm-hmm. how does your partner like does he pinch your cheeks a lot or does he like kiss your face he really doesn't that yeah like, he, so no he really doesn't um he's not like as physically affectionate as i am like we we've talked about that many times in our, our relationship like that wasn't really how he was raised like it's not that his mother was not loving it's just that she wasn't like physically affectionate that wasn't like her love language so he and his siblings didn't really grow up with that as their love language either. Whereas my parents were very affectionate parents, you know, like lots of hugs and kisses all the time. Like, you know, that's just how I was raised. And unfortunately people do still come up to me and pinch my cheeks, even as an adult. And it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Don't touch my face. Like, why would you ever come up to someone and just start touching their face but like my mom will still do this to me sometimes. And I'm like, I am almost 40 years old. Stop. Like, <laughs> she, she's never going to stop. Well, you're always going to be her baby boy. Well, it, it, and also because I'm the only boy, I think that like makes it even worse. Yeah, like, <laughs> you know, very that, you know, like. Does she still try to like feed you? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, not in the way that she just starts cooking something. But I'll go over there and like my mom still buys food as if there were five people living in the house rather than just two. So she's constantly spending so much money at the grocery store. And she's like, I can't seem to stop myself. Like, you know, for 20 plus years, I was buying for a family of five. And now (laughs) there's just me and your dad. She's like, do you want anything? And she just opens up the pantry and she's like, just take it. I'm never going to use it. I love that. I don't know if I want to like do that with kids, but I like the idea of like the fantasy, right? Like low key gain a commune idea, but like living in a community where like I'm known as the fat dude on the block and everybody knows like they're going to get an invite to the barbecue. Everyone knows like it's going to be the belly out, but it's going to be a whole bunch of laughs. The food's going to be real fucking great. Everyone's going to be like loosening their belts afterwards. They're all going to be joking, probably a little bit tipsy with all the beer and the drink, but we're all going to be having an amazing time. You know, I love the idea of being that guy that anytime you come around, just grab something and just take it and go. Like if you're struggling with a situation, you know, I'm going to come around with a casserole or with like a, a, a frozen meal of some sort where it's like, listen, put all of these in your freezer. This will set you up for a month. Da da da. You know, I want to be that guy. I have a question. And like I say this with love, why do white people make so many casseroles? Because it's easy. I don't know if I've had many casseroles. Like, I feel feel like a lot of white people, myself included, (laughs) um, didn't really like get raised. Like my mom never taught me how to cook. I had to teach myself. So (laughs) casseroles were simple because you just put a bunch of shit together and throw it in the oven and you know in 30 to 45 minutes you have a meal that can last for at least a couple of days so see i don't know about casseroles but like i love a stew and i love a soup and i don't i don't know if that says anything in particular but like i was raised with a lot of that stuff during the winter and i I feel like i've said this before during the um episode on food and diet one of the only like food positive memories in my family was my mom making this potato and leek soup. And I had this like very distinctive memory of being like four, five years old, like super young, feet weren't touching the floor, this massive bowl in front of me, fresh bread and butter, and just eating this amazing soup. And it's like 
pouring rain outside and it's cold, but there's this beautiful, like, tasty, warm thing. And I don't know, like, to me, it's just my immediate go-to for anything like that. So, like y'all would have seen on my Instagram when Paul Weighty Matters Gaines got uh, diagnosed with covid a few months ago, I went around and brought that fat bitch some of my soup because I look after my friends. I'm going to have to try that or you're going to have to give me the recipe because the only soup that I remember eating a lot growing up was borscht, which is like a beet soup, which is good. I really love it. But I mean, that was like the only because it's like a very Eastern European thing. So that's like. That and chicken noodle soup, like mom would make chicken noodle soup from scratch, but that and borscht are the only two like soups I remember growing up. Nah, potato and the you Russian. Are you no, Russian? No, borscht borscht isn't specifically Russian. It's just Eastern European. So Poland, Lithuania, Russia, Ukraine, um, Romania, Bulgaria, they all have like a different version of borscht. Ooh, I love it. You know, the more I talk to you, the more fascinating you get. What, me? Yeah. Why? <laughs> it's just interesting to like, get to know people. You seem oh. like you have layers. You're like, you're like Shrek. You're an onion. I'm a parfait. <laughs> Man, hell no, you know I don't like no parfaits. <laughs> ah. Tim and I have these memories of like soups and stews and things growing up. Like, is it like a food for you, Alex, where it's like, makes you think of home, makes you think of comfort. At any time you're having a down day, you're like, I could just use like a helping of that. Okay. So something kind of like that. So my grandmother, she has made, she makes pound cake. She's made pound cake like since before my mom was born. And like, it's always good. It's like the best pound cake. Like to whoever's listening out there, like my grandmother makes the best pound cake. There will be no arguments. There will be no debates, no discussions, mine. And like every time we go up there, like there's just a cake. She just makes it in preparation of us coming up there. So there's always pound cake. So that's the thing I like. And like Whenever I do get a little homesick, I think about that cake and I just look forward to the next family function so that I can see my mama and then get some of her cake. Oh, that's really sweet. I like that. Yeah. So <clears throat> I think many of us can identify with struggling to accept compliments or kind words when they're given. What has that been like for you as you get positive feedback on the body that you've worked for? Okay, I feel like this is kind of a Southern thing. Whenever I do get compliments, I always feel a little anxious just because I don't know what to say next. Because whenever, like down here in the South, we have this thing called Southern hospitality, right? Where we're basically just like kind and generous to a fault to like complete strangers, even if you don't like them. So like, sometimes I'll get people who will tip, give me a compliment and like, I might not necessarily like them, but I still feel weird not acknowledging it or accepting it. And also I always feel like I have to like give a compliment in return. So I will just find like some random thing that I like about them and just say, oh, I like that as way of saying like an additional thank you or something. But lately, I've kind of been trying to emulate um, champagne bubbles. Shout out to the big fat slut. Uh, she She loves to get compliments and she will just go like, yes, I know. Like, I want to get on that level so bad and, like, not feel like an asshole for saying it. Because it's, like, it takes a lot. Like, working on your confidence is a lot of work. And it's nice to be, like, appreciated. Like, I don't need the, I don't need people to tell me or give me compliments. But when I get them, it is nice to, like, have that acknowledgement of it. Oh, I also want to make a side note. Um, to anyone who needs to hear this, 
being confident does not mean that you are confident 24 seven. Like there are days where I'm like, Oh, I feel fat, but in a bad way, or, Oh, like, why did I do this? Like, this is so bad. Or the dreaded, like existential crisis where you like get a flashback of something really stupid you did. Like it could be decades in the past and you're just like, Oh God, did, was I really that bad? Like, was that me? So yeah, just because you are confident doesn't mean you like aren't allowed to have some like faulty days. But yeah, I can totally. Sorry, relate. I forgot what you had asked. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, you actually answered the question. It, it was basically, how do you manage compliments when they come your way? Do you feel comfortable with them? Do you struggle with them? Do you feel like there's that sense of imposter syndrome? Because I think a lot of us go through all that, a lot of like what you were saying. It's like you hear someone say something nice about you and you think, oh, that's so nice. Thank you. I, I want to say something nice to you too. And like, I don't think that's a bad thing. But like you say, Champagne for Bubbles, the villainess of the gainer community, as she has self-dubbed, um, she makes a point of saying that there is actually nothing wrong where if someone says, oh my God, you're so beautiful, you are perfectly valid to say, thank you, I know. Aren't I gorgeous? Like, in that moment, revel in you. Revel in the greatness that is you. It, that's the point of a compliment. And, yeah. But I totally get what Alex was saying about how, like, you don't want to feel like an asshole. Because I, I do feel like it's kind of like common courtesy has been drummed into your head that if you get a compliment, you should give one. Because if you don't, then you're just going to look arrogant or you're going to be like, yeah, I'm awesome. I know it. You can tell me all you want. Thanks so much. You know, like you don't want to be you don't want to tread that very fine line between confidence and arrogance. So <clears throat> And James and I have talked about how it's been a struggle for me to accept compliments most of my life. Like I have a tendency to be self-deprecating if only because I don't want to appear as being arrogant, you know? So I will use, uh, what is the, what is the word you said, James, uh, the type of language that people use when they're talking themselves down? What, what do we call that? Oh, um, so there's self-deprecating, which yeah. is being unkind to yourself, but there's also um, softening language softening language that's right which despite being gainers is not actually uh the best thing we all do this um softening language is when we try to basically make what we're saying easier to digest and depending on who we speak to we tend to add more softeners to try to make it more digestible so the statement might be alex you hurt my feelings you're being a bitch but adding softening language might be Alex, you know, I just, I really feel like I need to take the time to tell you, you know, because I just, I need you to understand that maybe you could just try to, to, to be a little bit more considerate of what you're saying because it, it hurt my feelings just a little bit. And, you know, it's not a massive problem. It's just, I wanted to make you a little bit more aware. And it becomes this whole thing of, first of all, you said way more words than you needed to. You didn't really say much of anything. You know, it's like we, we kind of do this in conversation when someone gives us language or a sentence with all of that crap packed into it. It's like an Amazon box. You open it up. There's all the stuffing and you just kind of throw it all out until you get to the package point in the middle. So even though I've said to you all of those platitudes, you still only heard Alex, you're being a bitch. What you said hurt my feelings, which is what I wanted you to hear anyways. But sometimes that message also gets lost because we're not being direct we use too much softening language and the point is missed entirely. Well, you know, that actually kind of brings up the next question, which is how do you handle negative commentary and do you feel you manage it better as a bigger person versus when you started your weight gain journey? Okay, so negative comments online, to be honest, if you are a complete and utter stranger to me online, I could not give a damn. I honestly could, cannot bring myself to care. Like I've, and I love the fact that I've gotten to a point where like, I see that I'm just like, okay, like the block button is free. Like, yo, deleting comments is so fun when they're just like shitty for no reason. Like it's just, you tap it and you just throw it in the trash can. Uh, now, when it comes to negative stuff in person, I'm not gonna lie. 
my Pisces ass is a little sensitive. Like, you know how it is being a water sign. So like, I did, it takes me a minute. And like, sometimes I will think about it like longer than I should. But nowadays I do better with just like standing my ground. I try to like reflect inwards if it is something that I've done personally. If it's something where I'm just like living my life, I do everything in my power to just like, not so much ignore it, but I just move on from it. I hear it and then it just washes off my, like a turtle's back, you know? Like, I forgot that. I forgot that you're a Pisces. Like, I love that we have all three water signs on right now. <clears throat> yeah. How did you? Oh, God. Huh? One of us is like a pond. Oh, I said that um, Cancer is like the ocean. Pisces was like the currents. The, ra- like the river or something like that. Or the rivers. And then, oh, Scorpios are like lakes. <clears throat> Dip into the cool waters of James Lake. Because I, I feel like Scorpios represent fresh water. I don't know why, but I do. I, th- I feel like they represent fresh water. Cancers represent ocean water. And then Pisces, because they're just constantly moving and their emotional and mental states are always fluctuating. I feel like they're the rivers because they never stop moving. Okay. okay, you're not wrong, but goddamn, why'd you have to come for me like that? Because you're so gorgeous, we had to put you in your place a little bit because how dare you show up on this podcast episode where, of course, the listeners can't see you, but we have to look at how gorgeous you are and it's just rude and it's inconsiderate. Okay, I'm going to give a great example of how to accept a compliment. Like, you know what? Thank you. Like, you're not wrong. There you go. I like that. (laughs) Yeah. You know, in fact, that's what you, anyone who gets a compliment, just be like, you're not wrong like that's the perfect thing to say because you're literally just agreeing with them Hmm. i like that so confidence is known to be the it thing that sells do you think that you are more confident inside and do you feel like your confidence is portrayed on the outside okay i will say like on the inside there's definitely like a battle like I still have to remind myself like I'm doing this for me like I'm doing this because I want to because I enjoy it and like I have to remind myself like no matter what anyone else thinks like as long as I'm not hurting anybody like I'm gonna just do whatever I want right now apparently that translates to the outside because I'm not gonna lie when you talk about like confidence selling I wasn't, I was not trying to do all of this to, to sell anything, to like promote myself. I literally just made a gainer account because I was like, you know what? I want to actually get into this community. I want to like go full force because like the panoramic had hit and it like really made me prioritize the stuff I want in my life because, you know, you know, one day the world could just turn upside down, right? Yeah. So I just made it simply because I wanted to. I had no idea that I would be like on this level, like never in a million years. I mean, I've said this to you before, you know, we used to challenge people during the live streams to name a Black Roma Liberty. And that's part of the race issue is acknowledging that no one could name a Black Roma Liberty. But then there was one time that I threw that challenge out there and someone was immediately like, slabs of abs, Alex, he's a Roma Liberty. And I was like, yeah. that's my baby. He's he's put himself out there and the people love him and all that delicious melanated essence that you put. And you're now recognized as like that person in our community just by virtue of you putting your delicious fat ass out there. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. See, you're not wrong. <laughs> See. Throwing you some, uh, throwing you some little love balls there. Just like, go on. What are you gonna do with that compliment, bitch? What are you gonna do with it? Yeah. Oh, and shout out to Indie Gainer for saying that. At first, when I saw that, I wasn't, I wasn't sure if it was like an actual thing or if like I was the only one on his mind. But like, yeah, I guess that is the, that is the spotlight I've stepped into. So, shine on, bitch. One hundred. 
And, you know, again, Tim and I have spoken about this. When I hit 3,000 followers, I did that live stream where I was like, this feels amazing. And thank you to everyone for being so supportive. But I genuinely don't know how to conduct myself on this platform with this kind of followership. Like, what is the appropriate way of doing it? And I think it was um, Abe, Sneaky Sea Bear, who just said, just fucking own it. Like, at some point the over humility is going to come across as trying to be inauthentic because you're trying to palm off the obvious statement of, well, you're clearly popular. You're clearly well received because of your followership. So there's kind of that acknowledgement and you're right. Just acknowledging it and saying, thank you. I have worked hard. I did earn my spot here is perfectly valid and a perfectly fine thing to do. So to everyone out there listening, who's struggling, just accept your spot. Yeah. And look, and also, like, when you say own it, like, that's definitely something that I've, one of my mantras was, like, own who you are. And, like, one of the key things, I guess, like, that I've learned when it comes to trying to be confident is you have to own everything, including, like, your flaws. Like, sometimes I'll just be like, oh, I'm sensitive. Yeah, I own that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm uh, I f- I hyper focus. I own that. Like, oh, I'm awkward. Hell, I own that. Like, there was, there's actually one time someone had commented that I was like awkward on your lives, James. And I was like, you know what? I've been awkward my entire life and like it's worked out so far. So, you know what? Yeah, I'm awkward and I'm going to keep being that. So, like, welcome to the club. (laughs) Yeah. And, like, apparently my awkwardness isn't, like, a huge deterrent, apparently. So, you know what? I'm going to just own it. You you got to own your triumphs and your flaws. 100. Because no one's perfect 100% of the time. I like that, Alex. So, we acknowledge that active weight gain makes us more consciously aware of the world around us with things like body positivity, healthy at every size, fat phobia, and all the ways that different social elements intersect. What do you think gainers need to learn more from when it comes to engaging with and championing other members in the community? So, okay. That's a, I love how all of your questions are just like the, t- the starter questions for like a graduate level thesis. <laughs> like, I feel like I could write 20 pages on that question alone. Two things, fat phobia definitely, like I, this I feel like goes for everyone, but especially like chasers and encouragers. I need y'all to understand that like fat phobia is a thing and that it is systemic. Like y'all just treating people who are like two, three times your size, like they can do exactly what you can do and thinking that that's helping them. It's not like, do not ask, do not ask someone like SF gut muscle to go on a two mile hike because you think the waterfall will be romantic. Please do not ask someone like muscles and magic to get in your, uh, your little Prius that he will not fit into, okay? I'm, and I'm gonna need you, if you're going to take an Uber on a date, get XL. Like, I need y'all to understand like how this stuff affects people who are different than you and acknowledge it and accept it because guess what? Being fat is not a bad thing. And if you are into it, you're going to need to accept that. Okay. Yeah. Which goes into the second part. Like, I think we, like, everyone needs to understand the concept of fat acceptance. Because, like, while body positivity, I understand what people are trying to do with body positivity, but, like, that is body positivity to fat acceptance is what all lives matter is to Black Lives Matter. Like, when we say that, like, we're trying to accept fat people, that does not mean we are trying to exclude skinny people. We're not trying to exclude average size people. Like straight size people will always have a place in this world. 
when it comes to like a society that is based on fat phobia, that cannot be said for someone who is quote unquote fat. Yeah. So we need to actually work with that as a more radical way of actually accepting and helping to give equality and equity to people of different sizes. And I think that's especially true for people who are gamers. You know, I've said something similar to this on my TikTok a couple of times recently. You know, to me, gaining is the ultimate in body positivity and fat acceptance because so much of it hinges on the idea that you're allowed to be fat and happy so long as you discovered your happiness when you were fat. God, you had to have hated yourself as you became fat. God forbid that you should love yourself as you become fat. You're allowed to be happy, skinny, happy, fat, and you're allowed to be happy as you go from being fat to skinny. But the concept of going skinny to fat must be imbued with misery because why else would you have become fat? God, you were so skinny. Why on earth would you be fat except for depression and misery and a food addiction and laziness? So often I feel like gainers really do miss the point that we exist in this moment of social and political interaction where we actually do have an important mission statement to be a part of and we're too busy over here jacking off or running away from our problems to actually acknowledge that. Like, it, it, it does amaze me sometimes how unpolitical some gainers can be about their bodies. And I don't think it's people's responsibility to have to be political, just in the same way it's not the responsibility of every Black person to have to be the next Martin Luther King or to have to do every everything. Like, some people just want to be Black and chill at home, playing video games. They don't want to have to be bothered. Same thing with queer people, same thing with women, same thing with everybody. I get that. But we really are quite radical in the wider world in terms of what we think, feel, and believe in our approach. So I think more of us should probably take the initiative to like. Which is an interesting space to inhabit, I think, because, you know, like you were saying about the way that society views all this stuff, it's because they think that being uh, a woman, being fat, being black, being a, a person of color, being anything that is not cisgendered, heterosexual, white is a step down on the ladder, on the ladder, you know, and like we exist in a space where it's like we're trying to get society to realize that there shouldn't be a ladder at all. You know, I'm not taking a step down because I'm no longer a skinny person. Alex didn't take a step down because of something that he, you know, he's born a person of color. You can't change that, you know, like that, you know, women can't change it because they were born a woman. So it's like, I hate that the latter exists in the first place. And I think James is right about how we should be a bit more political in what we're doing. But unfortunately, the majority of the gamer community is doing exactly what he said, just jacking off to a screen and running away from our problems so i don't know how fast that movement is going to you know affect some change but i'm really hoping that like because we just did an episode with an 18 year old in the community and like i have a lot of hope for the younger gainer and fetish community so let's just hope that they can push through what we've been trying to do all this time fingers crossed girl fingers crossed also can i can i just say one real quick like when i listen to that episode like don't it feels like a little bit crazy that like me like all three of us here are like in the same generation but we're born like so far apart we might as well have had different lives yeah it's weird how generational um uh what is it i guess generational politics happen because my cousin is part of generation x and he's only four years older than i am but he was born tail end of the 70s so like he falls into the gen x category whereas me born in 83 you know i'm considered a millennial james you were born in what 87 <laughs> I don't know when you were born. Wait, if I was born, we're 10 years apart. So you're born in 93. Sorry. I was born in 92. 92. I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm, bad at, I'm bad did, at maths. Did you see this dinosaur think that I was as old as her? Alex, help me out here. Ugh. I forget I, that you're I that know. much older than she, me. He just, did he really just think you were Littlefoot out here? My God. <laughs> 
Guys, I graduated from high school in 2001. I have been out of high school for 20 years. So oh, <laughs> just to put that birthday. in context. <laughs> oh, I was six when that happened. So you were born in 95? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think 95 yeah. is literally like the cutoff, isn't it? It's like the last year of uh, Y or millennial. Like, okay, I... The one that I've always subscribed to, just because it's easiest, is like 1980 to 2000 is millennials. Yeah, like a nice so 20 like, bracket. Yeah, and that's what it yeah. should be. A generation is supposed to be 20 years, so. Yeah, but even then, it's like, okay, rem- say again, Tim, when were you born? 83. Okay, so like us being both born in the same generation, like you grew up during the time where like, AIDS was a thing like that's like deeper in your memory than it is well for me kind of I mean I was a child you know I was six years old when um 1989 rolled around so like it's not that I don't have any memory of it it's just that I had no context for it at that age you know I remember watching the challenger explode but I was a child so like it, it I had no context for it you know um but being uh, an 18 year old gay man in the early 2000s, like I did have people who were schooling me on what had happened 20 years prior, you know, in uh, San Francisco, California, you know, in New York, the AIDS crisis, like people took the time to educate me on that. Hmm. All right. And like, for me, uh, in terms of like that stuff, I, I mean, I started learning more about that stuff probably like mid 20s but like in the late 2010s so that's like 40 years to me and also I learned most of that stuff like on the internet versus like having a bunch of like gay sherpas around me to like tell me what went on (laughs) gay sherpas I mean, oh, I'd love to of, find some of the um, older gay guys that I knew back in Kansas City and be like, did you realize you were a gay Sherpa to me? <laughs> wait, does that make you my Sherpa? I suppose so. But wait, who's the llama? <laughs> <laughs> mm, I mean, James, you are the hairiest of us, so. That is true. And I am very Cusco-like. In fact, yeah. that's my, in fact, that's my Disney princess of choice. Is is it? So what was what was the uh, what was John Goodman's character's name? Pacha. Pacha. Yeah, okay, Pacha. I don't really feel like I'd love to be Kronk, but <laughs> I'll I'll never achieve that. So <laughs> I mean, you do have those like those triceps. You just like have those oh, what, arms behind you. Uh, yes, yes, the pose. Daddy, yes. <laughs> Yes, viewers, you can't, viewers, listeners, you can't see it, but daddy's showing us his arms. Yeah. And like, again, these like cat ears while you're doing that is just immaculate. Do well, that's, kitty. that's where muscle kitty came from. Do the muscle kitty voice. Do I, it. I'm just, I'm just a little muscle kitty cat. <laughs> I love it. Just, just oh a my little, God, I little, love it. a little muscle pussy. You know what? We're going to put that's going to be an episode of Dickens. It's just you as Muscle Kitty. That's what I want. That's no, Muscle Pussy. Like, title it Muscle Pussy. I need muscle to... Pussy. My little muscle. muscle. Pussy. Mm. Like, she's just getting all of them Kegels in today. Oh, my goodness. Do you think gainers have a responsibility to step up to the political plate when it comes to educating ourselves about our bodies, especially in a fat-phobic society? Okay. So... I'm going to base this on the context that any marginalized group should like should take this advice. However you try to operate in this world that is dead set dead set against you is your business. If you want to march in the streets to get your rights, go for it. If you want to <clears throat> watch some YouTube videos to escape the horrors, do it. If you want to talk about it with someone you trust, do it. If you don't necessarily want to speak on it, 
but you do everything in your power to make sure that it doesn't happen to other people, go for it. As long as you are not actively harming like your community that is marginalized or another marginalized group, do whatever you need to to get through this world. Because trying to get through something that is systematically designed to like oppress you or just like destroy you or just make you miserable in general, like that's a lot to deal with. And like trying to say that you should add the responsibility of speaking on it like constantly over and over, it's a lot. So whether or not someone is politically actively talking about it, that is up to you. Now, I will say that we are definitely right when it comes to like the fact that we do need to have that conversation and we do need to like strive for that. But like on an individual level, like whatever you need to do to get through this, do it. What are some simple steps we can take in self-care to build ourselves up? Again, it's individual. Like anything that like just gives you a little hit of dopamine, a little serotonin, I would say oxytocin, but like, like you don't need a booty call to like feel better about yourself. Just say, like, whatever gives you like a little something to like take the edge off the day or like revitalize you or just like remind you that the world isn't as shitty as it seems to be. Like, do it. Like, for me, whenever I have like a kind of a bad day, I always think as long as I get some chips and some juice like that's my go-to snack and maybe i'll just like watch some youtube videos or i would say tiktok but i follow like so many things that are like political like that would probably make it worse Mm -hmm. but like if you can find like someone who can make you laugh on there and just like go through all of their videos like give them those views give them those likes Mm -hmm. uh watch something you like on netflix like watch a show that you love to watch like 20 times and it never seems to get old for a lot of people that's the office i don't get it it's a little overrated i don't care if you cancel me for that like it's the truth like just saying for me Um, it's uh watching reruns of flavor of love because if you think your life is fucked up try watching that show (laughs) right exactly like sometimes like try to look at things in like a different perspective like Not to say that your problems don't matter if you compare them to others, but like if you can, if you have a little bit of empathy and knowledge about other people, like it can give you a lot of perspective, acceptance, yeah, perspective, acceptance, and gratitude for where you are. And sometimes you just need that little kick to like get you through the day. Hmm. My uh, my go to is watching Nailed It. I do love oh, that show because I, I fucking love Nicole Byer. Anything Nicole Byer, I'm obsessed. Obsessed. It's like I want her and Tiffany Haddish to be like my lesbian black mums and just to re raise me as their child. That would make me so happy. I need them to be my best friends in Hollywood. And I want a show featuring just the three of us and London Hughes, actually, who is also incredible. If you all don't know London Hughes, you need to watch To Catch a Dick on Netflix because she's so fucking funny. Very, very well worth the watch. <laughs> I was actually going to say, um, if you want something easy to do that's going to build other people up is when you see people's stories on Instagram, don't just, like, react to it. Send them a little message. If you react with love heart eyes, like, send them a message that says, I love how you look. Tell them how sexy they look. Tell them how great they look. Tell them, my God, you look so thick knowing that that's what's going to make them feel good. If someone does that thing where they're like, ask me anything, sit down and ask them like five questions because there is nothing worse than looking at your thing and being like, oh, two people have responded. No, sit down and write someone five questions. Even if they're questions that you know the answer to, not everyone else knows the answer. Ask them what they do for work. Ask them how their day is going. Ask them what they want to do for fun. Ask them about travel. Ask them about their family. Ask them things. Be invested and engage in other people's lives and journey do that look one final question 
what can we do to help lift up those of us who get the least amount of light? Shine the light on them. Like, okay. I did something like this back in um, May, which is AAPI, Asian American <clears throat> Pacific Islander Heritage Month. That you I noticed that not only did I not see a lot of like Asian or Pacific Islander queer representation like anywhere, I noticed that I myself was not following that many. So I just decided to like look for them as best I could. And then I shouted out a few creators on Instagram. Now, again, you have to do more than that or because it's like, that's a very performative thing, but like, that's the start. Like you have to actually like find those people. You have to look at, look at what they do and then do everything in your power to like encourage people to like, look at them. And Hey, if you have a big platform, like shout people out, like talk to them, figure out what they do and like try and show a little interest in that. Cause like people are very multifaceted and they're three-dimensional human beings. Like if you look a little deeper, you would be amazed at what you can find. Another thing is like whenever you are in a whenever you are in a space that doesn't have certain people and something goes amiss when the when the people you're around talk about like a marginalized group, like speak up for them. Like I know it can be kind of difficult because for me, I'm always wondering, like, is it my place to speak on someone else's issues? But yeah. at the end of the day, if I want to try and, like, help people that are different than me, that requires me to, like, be able to stand up for them yeah. as best I can when they're not there. And if they have an issue with, like, the way I'm doing it, just pivot and adapt, like, as long as you are trying, like more, more often than not, people will see that. And even if they don't, as long as you see it, just have the confidence in knowing that you are doing what you can to help. Right. I love that. Oh, something else I would like to add. Mm -hmm. um, and this, to, this applies to both being confident and shining a spotlight on those who don't have one. Um, be unapologetic. Like, you don't stop apologizing for things that you do not need to apologize for. Like, as long as you are, like, not hurting someone, including yourself, like, you do not have to apologize for who you are and what you are about. And also, what, if anyone is trying to figure out, like, how to be more confident, here's the advice I would give. Be kind to others, including yourself. You need to be kind and like to yourself as a person. Because like, so, like the biggest enemies that we have are ourselves and our own minds. So like, just start being kind to who you are and like what you're about. You know, there's a, a line that I heard not too long ago that I've taken and I love it so much. When you see your friend having a hard day and they're beating themselves up and they're being self-deprecating say to them why are you being mean to my friend challenge them on that why are you being mean to my friend why are you bullying my friend why are you being nasty to my friend because my friend's an amazing person i wouldn't be friends with them if they weren't amazing and they don't deserve that treatment it's such a a left of field way of framing that notion that I think really helps jump people out of when they start to spiral. And I know it's helped me in the past. So if you see that in someone and you're not quite sure what to do, try that. But that brings us to the end of this week's episode. Alex, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I love the fact that I was on Fat Ellen's show. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, which one's Ellen? I mean, I know it's me, but like, What's Tim? Who's Tim? I feel like Tim, like, Tim is, um, what's the guy's name? Twitch. Like the dancer on the <laughs> show. 
God. I wish I wish that I could be the fat Chelsea handler, but I'm not as witty as she is. Yep. Chelsea yes. love Oh, him. I love Chelsea Handler. <laughs> I see that for you. Yes. Alex, oh. where can people find you? Okay. I am on Instagram at slabs.ofabs. I am I also have a backup account called Thick You Bitch. Like T H I C C U B C H. I'm also I also got a new Twitter because I want to post ass pics. It's called Thank You Bitch 450. Well, thank you very much for that. And I think that is a wrap for now here on Thick Radio. Please remember to like and subscribe, rate us five stars and leave a good review. If you like this episode, the podcast, or just us in general, share it with your friends and encourage them to tune in. As always, you can find me on Grummer, Instagram, and TikTok at Stanham, and Twitter and YouTube at Stanham G. And you can find me on Grammar as Orpheus. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok as Thicky Mouse. And of course, you can find more of what we talked about today on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Patreon at Thick Radio. So until next time, bye fats. Bye fats. Let's talk about it. Radio is a Patreon and Enter app podcast produced by Stan and Vicky Mouse. Next and Master by Stan. Our artwork is provided by Lucky Two. Our theme song is provided by Bonify Cream.